Hi, how could you give me the name of who are the one that must be on stage, please, on the, in the chat? Because I've got several uh, demand. Okay, please ask to share um, audio and video again, please. Okay, this is done. Oh, nice. Okay, and normally, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, you're the, the only one on stage? I'm not sure, am I the only one on stage? Uh, okay, I'm perfect, sorry. Okay, so uh, I, I can see the. In the sorry, in the, in the sorry. Oh, okay, so uh, can you oh, share your screen? Are you still here? Sure. Hang on, I need to allow. Nikki, I think you should uh, ask to share audio and video again. Uh, yes, hi, uh, Patrick, everybody. Hey, Nikki, please. If you're here, Okay, just or waiting just a minute. Yes. Hey, sorry. I had to my Chrome permission. Okay. Yeah. To so, share my screen. So. Um, yeah, can you try, please? Yeah. Let me just see whether. Okay. Hey, here we are. All right, can you see my screen? Okay, can you, yes, can you put it full screen, please? Let me do that. Your presentation. Okay. And we are. Let's swap right, this way. Yes. Does that work now? Okay, stage is yours. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so yeah. we're, we're all set. Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. So thanks for joining this uh, session. I think there's a little bit of a typo in the. Um, in the uh, I would say the title uh, is actually the evolution of API-driven innovation. So today, um, I, I thank you for taking the time to spend the next 45 minutes with us. Um, my name is Nikki, and I work for IBM, uh, the hybrid cloud division. And I look after what we call the digital platforms business. Uh, we, we like long names. We like long uh, three-letter acronyms, as you can tell from the company's name after uh, you know a three-letter acronym as well. Um, so I look after what we call the application management integration space, and API is one of those areas. But it, it covers, I would say, API is just a technology. I mean, if you look at the, the meaning of APIs, um, it's actually um, mean, it stands for application programming interface, right? So when I first came across APIs more than 25 years ago, 
uh, in the writing applications, it's the way that one application talks to another. You open up an interface and you say, hey, if, if my application uh, needs to talk to another application, I would use an API, right? But that's, that has evolved, especially with the internet and the standardization of APIs. And, and now APIs be, become a business, I would say acronym rather than just the technology acronym, right? And it's driving a lot of innovation as, as you can see. So, and that's why we have these API days. I mean, this has been ongoing for quite a while uh, about how APIs are transforming the way organizations do business. No, so it's not just one application talking to another application now. It's, it be, it's become the, uh, the way organizations talk to each other, right? The, and, and how business is being conducted, right? So over the next 40 minutes or so, we're just going to talk about, you know, how that has changed um, over the, the years and how, you know, what are some of the trends that we're seeing uh, within the, the economy itself and, and business itself, right? And, and how this is going to evolve with, with technology, right? Um, so we're going to discuss a little bit on that. So one of the key things is, you know, I think the last couple of months, um, um, all of us have probably uh, realized that the world has become very different and, and the world's not going to be the same again. A lot of people are saying, you know, you know the new normal, you know, when's normal going to come back? You know, uh, normal's going to look very, very different or a little bit different in a sense, right? And I guess um, a lot of us, uh, I, I guess most of our audience here today are from the technology industry, right? And a lot of us um, come from the technology industry and, and some of you run businesses. You realize that you're dealing with a lot of new um, demands, right? Uh, especially over the last couple of months, right? Where, you know, with, with cities going to lockdown and now cities are coming back to normal again. I mean, they're trying to get back to, to normal, right? But um, one thing for sure is that um, over the last couple of years, 2000 or 16, 15, you know, people talk about digital transformation since the advent of the internet. You know, since we started, you know, even 15, 20 years ago, right? Um, there's always this impetus of what can we do with the internet and, and, and with mobile devices uh, and, and advances in mobile technology, um, that has also transformed the way that we interact with businesses. However, that, kind of accelerated a lot more over the last couple of months, especially the first half of this year, after the, uh, you know, the, the COVID situations and all the lockdown, then we realized that, you know, business, the businesses um, cannot go back to conducting business the way that they used to do, right? Um, um, digital presence, right? Uh, the, the very fact that we're doing this virtually speaks for itself. Otherwise, I'll be there with you in Hong Kong in the hotel room. Uh, in the hotel ballroom talking about this, right? But um, the very fact that we're doing this virtually is testament to, to the fact that, um, you know, business is a little bit different. I mean, uh, the way we're doing conducting business is, is very different, right? And, and because the digital channel used to be just um, one of the delivery channels, right? It, it used to be one of the delivery channels, so unless you're an Uber or you're, um, you're, you're Amazon or, you know, one of those, you know, online only business even amazon's opening up physical stores in the us right but if you are online only presence right then you know yeah perhaps you know it's it's normal but if you realize that a lot of the tr traditional um businesses like banks and and even uh shopping malls and stuff like that or even you know food for, for that matter um a digital presence was just one of the delivery channels that um, these businesses used to interact with their clients, right? Before pre-COVID. And, and now you, they realize that it's not just one, it is the primary, right? Uh, it becomes the main digital channel. And because of that, there is a great emphasis on, you know, how do organizations um, adapt to these digital platforms? How do we, um, you know, ensure that we continue to do business and grow our businesses uh, with the use of our digital platforms, right? So it's no longer just about you know, uh, I need to have APIs. It's like you have to have a digital presence. API is the enabling technology, and and you know you have to ensure that you know it's it's there all the time because that is that, that has become your primary channel to do business. Because if that's gone, um, the ability for you to conduct business becomes, uh, I would say, uh, tremendously compromised. Right, very very much compromised. Right, and and. And once you are up there, out there with your digital platform, you know, there's always new threats, 
cyber threats, uh, denial of service threat, or even without anything malicious, you know, because of heavy loads of traffic, whether it is 1010 or 1111 sale, right, that's coming, right? Um, you're going you're gonna to have, you know, huge demands on the infrastructure. Right. And how do you cope with that? So a lot of you know us in the technology industry, especially if you are supporting your business, um, that's gonna be quite a critical challenge. Right. So moving forward, you know, um the key priorities, I think this is done by uh, McKinsey, right? Um, the key priorities are to stabilize what you have as an infrastructure, right? And then look at what the key priorities uh within the business to say, hey. What must we do? I mean, if you look at McKinsey, look at the different analysts, right? Even Gartner, they'll say, hey, you need to ensure that the infrastructure and the entire digital presence is resilient, right? Um, you know, building private cloud may not be good enough, or you need, how do you ensure that your environments that you run your digital platforms on are, are resilient, right? Are reliable and up uh, and they're up all the time. Secondly, how do you ensure that it's scalable so that, uh, it, when you have huge volumes of traffic, when you run a promotion, that you're able to cope with it. Because without that, you're going to lose business, you're going to lose credibility, you're going to lose customers uh, ultimately, right? So we all know why, right? So there's a variety of reasons why people go onto digital platforms, right? And, and enhance custom um, um, digital platforms. You heard of this thing called DX, which is digital transformation, as we like to shorten things in the technology industry. The new term has come to mind, right? As some of you might have seen it, it's called CX, right? It's customer experience. It's all about how do you enhance your customer experience? How do you make it easier for your customer to do business with you? The other point also, oops, the other point also is how do you ensure that when they do business, the, you, you get them to do more business with you? So customer stickiness is important. Wallet share is important because now that you only, you know, your, your main, I would say channel that you engage with your, your clients are through a digital means. How do you ensure that you can increase your wallet share? How do you build loyalty where they can just with a click of a button go to a different to a competitor, right? And it's all about building trust with your clients. And at the same time, um, how do you ensure that you, you improve your profitability as well? It's not just wallet share, right? You can sell a lot to the client, but if it's not profitable, uh, it's not good for business either. Right? How do you increase your profitability? How do you at the same time serve your customer by improving your customer experience, uh, by offering better customer service, right? All this is critical. And at the same time, um, how do you ensure that you put in platforms uh, that are agile, right? Agility is key because um, you, know, you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You don't know what the new, new normal is gonna be like, right? And, and you know, the, the environment is so challenging at the moment. Uh, you know, somebody can just tweet something and the whole business environment changes, right? So, so we've seen that happen, uh, especially in, in, in our region where um, there's a lot of external forces as well that changes. So businesses need to have an agile platform so that you can, um, you know, kind of move, move, the, move the way that you do business very, very quickly, adjust to, to whatever is the, um, you know, the way that you want to do business uh, in that particular time, right? So what might work um, might not work. What might work today might not work three months down the road, right? Or you, you because competitors are coming, new entrants are coming, uh, disruption is coming. So ultimately, it's about that customer experience, making it easier for your clients to do business with you, being relevant, right? So there's a lot of disruptive forces, right? I mean, regardless of um, the industry that you're in, right? Whether it's financial services whether it's logistics, uh, whether it's because of regulatory requirements, because um, you know, as, as new technologies, new off, um, services are, are deployed, uh, there for sure there, you know, there are new risks as well, right? So how do you ensure that um, you, know, you protect your clients from fraud and offer them you know, security, right? And also, also your shareholders will also want uh, demand a lot more returns on investment as well, despite you know, it being a challenging economic climate, there's still expectation from shareholders for us to be able to deliver, uh, you know, um, to their expectations, right? And as there's always technology, uh, you know, people like us, right, that are disrupting or offering new technology to disrupt the way that we do business. And there's always new entrants, right? So there's a lot of different forces, right? And, and how do you adapt to it? So, so if you look at APIs, it's an enabling technology and it's a key enabling technology. But um, where we start to see is, um, 
the, the deployment of how we use APIs um, is gonna, you know, gonna grow quite substantially. And it's not just APIs, right? It's how are we gonna do business with technology that we have, right? So some of the innovations that are driving transformations uh, is, you, is you know, it's not just API, it's AI as well, right? So you drop the P and people are saying, how do I use, um, artificial intelligence, or maybe I wouldn't say artificial intelligence. I tend to use that term a little bit more, I would say cautiously, I would say more augmented intelligence, right? Um, how do you use technology to augment what we do today so that we can actually, um, you know, do more and become more productive, right? Uh, and, and be able to do more and run our business more autonomously, right? So, so that's, that's key because as, as we realized uh, over the last couple of months as well, the last half of the year, um, you know, um, being physically at a location might not be possible, right? And we have to plan for that. And if you're starting to work with a lot of clients and a lot of our clients are looking at how do they automate a number of these processes so that if they were to lose the ability to, to, um, to do things physically um, in a physical location, can some of these things be automated? And the demands on the digital platforms are also critical, right? Because, you know, you, how do you scale? You know, how do you ensure that your, your systems are able to scale and meet the different demands? How do you ensure that they're always running 24-7? Because once you have a digital presence, um, the expectation from your clients is that it has to be up all the time, regardless of the time of the day. It's not like a physical shop, right? You open at 10 a.m. in the morning, you close at 10 a.m., 10 p.m. at night, or maybe in Hong Kong, close at midnight. Right, and, and there's an expectation, right, that business is done within certain work hours, or uh, certain hours, right? Um, in in digit, once you have a digital platform, it's a little bit different. Um, people expect it to be up all the time, right, and and they expect the performance to be there all the time, regardless of whether, uh, you know, it's a lot of people using it or very little people using it. But as a business, how do we ensure? that um, we ensure that our products and services are available all the time, right? Any time of the day, any day of the week. Um, so artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence is there to help us, uh, you know, um, um, to do some of those stuff, to automate some of those processes, whether it's allocating more resources, identi identifying faults in the system and, and um, helping to rectify some of those faults or whether it is uh, in the use of recommending products and services. Right um, to our clients to be more intelligent about their needs, um, and, and that's a way to increase wallet share. That's a, a way to help our clients, uh, you know, uh, you know, become more loyal to us or more sticky to us as well. So that AI part of it is important, um, you know. And and in addition to that, you start to see you know a lot more analytics being deployed, and sometimes even might be a little bit scary about some of the information that's being collected. And you start to see um, platforms. Um, I, I guess there are a couple of other sessions about open banking and so on. Um, you start to see the evolution of what we call the platform economy, right? Um, especially in, in industries, right, that do not have physical products. I mean, if you're selling uh, a mobile phone or a car or, you know, a TV set, there is a physical product for you to differentiate yourselves, right? But if you are in an industry uh, that is um, selling products and services, or services per se, like like banking or like telecommunications, it's all about services, right? There is no physical product per se, right? You are selling a service. Although you say credit card is a product, yes, you have a physical card, but that card can be virtual as well. It's basically a credit, uh, I would say, mechanism for you to do, uh, for you to conduct transactions or, or do payments. Right, so so it is not really a product per se. Although if you're from a banking industry, I know the bankers among us would would, would, would say, hey, you know, we, it's actually a product, but it's not really a product. It's actually a service that you're providing to your clients. So because it is a service, there is no, um, the the differentiation is a lot less, and the barriers to entry is a lot less because there's no physical product that you have to produce or manufacture. Um, right, so anybody could just come in and offer the same service. So how do you differentiate yourself? Right, you start to see a lot of challenges. I mean, credit card companies um, uh, are being challenged. Uh, banks are being challenged. I mean, look at Apple as they have launched their own credit card as a tie-up. 
with with you know the credit card issuers, right? And they're now issuing their own cards. And if you look at, I mean, I just received an invitation from a gaming company, a gaming peripheral company called Razer, and said, would I would I like to sign up for their new credit card as well? So you no, know, they're the new entrants trying to do that, right? And and how do we kind of build loyalty or how do we continue to do business, right? So one of the key things is banks or organizations, client experience is important, right? If, if the clients, if your clients in any industry, right? Here it says banking, but it can be any industry, right? Um, if they are delighted by the service that you provide, it, it will keep us it will keep us clients or customers coming back for more. I think that's always important, right? So regardless of the delivery channel that you use to engage your clients with, um, the experience that they have with your channel is critical, right? So that platform is becoming more and more critical, building that, that digital platform for you to do business with your clients. So a lot of people are saying, you know, if that's gonna happen, you know, really you know is it true yeah maybe amazon can do it maybe that i wouldn't say whether if it's going to happen i think it's when it's going to happen it's going to come to us in every single country i mean look at uh i mean some of the disruptors right um alibaba for example it's already doing you know alipay for a long time you know they're going to financial services everybody who has a platform because they hold the customer interface right um that they already own the customer in a sense in that they have the customer interface so they want to start to offer more and more products and services not just selling you know whatever products that is in their e-commerce platform but they want to offer the financial services around it and ultimately more and more services around it that is complementary right um to to what they're doing so they want to own your eyeball i mean they want to own your, your they want to be the, the the interface that captures you because once they have that, that offers the most value and the rest of the products or services that they're offering becomes just a commodity, right? That's where they make the most margins about profitability, right? So the platform economy is already here, right? And, and it's a fight right now between the e-commerce players like, um, you know, the AWS of the world, the Alibaba's of the world, or the traditional players um, like the financial institutions. Right, so so and all of this is made possible with the use of APIs, and that is gonna expand, right? That that's gonna expand tremendously, right? So if you look at it, um, the response from from the traditional, um, I would say, organ industries or organizations is how do you enhance your core products to differentiate yourself? They're looking at enhancing core products and, and looking at enhancing, finding new revenue streams, um, trying to find ways to, you know, get more operational excellence I'd say, out of it. Um, you know, you, you heard of SRE and stuff like that, right? Make sure that, you know, your systems are up and running all the time, provide a good customer experience, have more controls, build more trust, uh, and, and find new ways of working together. Because especially now, uh, you know, you, you, you won't be together in one building or in one room that often. Uh, how do you work in a you know a, a remotely connected way and more and more so all of this is made possible by technology and apis as well right you can start to see a lot of wider use and applications of apis right so the, the promise of the api economy is already there but what i'm going to say is that the take up will be even more even more dramatic um, dramatically uh i would say that that growth in the area will be more dramatical Right, so so look out for that. But it's not just about APIs. It's just remember, it's just the enabling technology. But it's the ability that the I would say the the possibilities that are made through this technology um, for for organizations to do business and conduct business um, in a digital um, way. Right. So some of you may already have started, um, but some people will say, hey, you know, how do I get started? Right. What am I doing? What are my business? And a lot of things is all around business. Don't just go out and say, I'm going to do APIs, right? It's all about the business goals. You know, what are we going to do? Whether it's B2B or B2C, you have to look at, you know, um, what are you trying to achieve from a business standpoint? And then choose the enabling technology that helps you to get there, right? So first of all, you have to define, you know, what are your 
um, business strategies, right? Whether, you know, are they financial? Are they, you want to have time to market? Or are you competing with other clients? Or is it because you want to capture the mobile market or increase your market share? A whole variety of things, right? Find that business goal, uh, pick one and, and start, you know, building that out, right? And, and there's, of course, new ideas coming all the time. I mean, we've got use cases that we've worked with clients that I can share with you, right? Um, they created APIs for B2B as well, not just B2C, right? Uh, where, you know, they can then engage with their clients, their commercial clients, and they can interface their uh, applications with, with them easily so that they can offer more um, you know, products and services and they can, can be more tightly integrated with their clients as well. So with that, it creates customer stickiness and hence it creates loyalty and, and hence it minimizes churn, right? So, so creating that kind of, um, uh, I would say, linkage with their clients will help them um, to continue to grow and protect the client base as well and also offer them a competitive advantage as well, right? So we've got use cases where, you know, organizations have done um, foreign and domestic remittances and so on. One of the other extensions of APIs is also in microfinancing, right? Uh, using blockchain, right? So with blockchain, you're able to do microfinancing to ensure that you know your clients and your customers and know the identity. Uh, and all this is also made possible through the use of APIs, right? So blockchain is not a separate technology. It's kind of, I would say, an extension of the API technology, right? Where you use certain, uh, you know, clear formats, like whether it's a hyperledger or a smart contract and stuff like that, um, to, to create that linkage and offer new products and services. And one of the key things that's, um, that pick, that's picking up really in a lot of, um, I would say, developing uh, economies, right, is the use of microfinancing, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in the more rural areas of some of the developing countries, or whether it's in you know places like Indonesia where, you know, um, Microfinancing is key. People are financing just to buy, you know, seeds to plant uh, crops and stuff like that, right? So they need financing for that. Um, and how do you do that in a quick and efficient way uh, at the same time, a low cost and it's easy, right? So it's all made possible uh, through that and then ensure that you're able to do that. So this is vendor financing as well with the use of blockchain, right? So, and, and use of smart contracts. So this is some of the, what some of the organizations are doing. Right, so Citibank, for example, they created uh, you know APIs and they've done it with uh, sandboxing and so on. Right, so again, it's there for for their clients for their clients to reach out to them to interface with them, and whether they want to interface with the point system and this is in Hong Kong, right? Um, so so that's where um, you know some of the innovation has taken place. Another example is a bank in India, RBL Reserve. Uh, Bank of India, right? Uh, RBL Bank, sorry, not Reserve Bank, but RBL Bank in India. Same thing alone, yeah, with the with the use of API technology, and also the deployment, um, the application of it all across their business. They're able to process much more, more transactions at a lower cost, right? And another bank in India actually uh, has taken on a different approach. They've taken on, um, they've deployed open banking to say that hey, you only need one, right? So that's why it's called Yono. Right, so they, they created a platform and they tie up with all the e-commerce players. So instead of the e-commerce players trying to um, you know, compete with them, they say, let's partner with the e-commerce players and let's, let's own the customer interface before the e-commerce players own the customer interface. So they tie up with the retail e-commerce players, the travel uh, industry as well, and all the different uh, you know, service providers, right? And created an online marketplace, whether it's to buy products and services, to book tickets, to, you know, buy books and so on, right? So they become that single point of contact. They want to own that client interface, right? And all this is made possible uh, with APIs. And this is how API is changing uh, the, the way that we do uh, business or we look at, you know, traditional industries like banking. So banking is no longer just banking. Banking is all around that customer journey, right? Say, hey, if you are going to buy something, let me offer it to you and I can offer you financing around it. I can offer you insurance around it. I can offer you, you know, a, a whole bunch of other products and services around it so that you only need to visit my site and I own that customer interface. And when you own that customer interface, you can, you, you can um, the profitability part becomes key, right? Because 
then you have more value uh, per se, and the clients will come to you. And that's where you can offer more value and that will increase your profitability, right? So this is one of the things that they've done. And these are some of the statistics around it, right? Um, you know, with, once they launch this, they actually uh, manage to acquire, uh, you know, a lot more new customers and at a six, more than 60% is the target age groups that they wanted to go after, which they were not doing very, very well because they were not, they were a traditional old bank. It's not seen as very hip. Younger people didn't want to bank with them, but they had to change that image. And with, with this, they, you know, they managed to do that very, very uh, successfully, right? So that's one of those areas. Another area um, that we're starting to see, uh, I mean, is the automation, right? So, you know, with, with automating, loan applications and the, um, you know, the use of AI and automation, you're able to then offer loans very, very quickly because when people need money, they want it really fast, but you also want to ensure that you lend money out um, uh, quickly. Uh, you, might, you, know, you must have a way of getting your money back as, as a financial institution, right? So and that's where uh, you know, um, some, of this, a, some of this innovation is done where they can build instant loan uh, approvals uh, and then embed those services to third-party online stores, whether it's you know an AliExpress or KelvinKlein.com. If you want to you know buy a new Kelvin Klein jacket and you want it to be financed, uh, that that can be done as well, right? Um, or and so on. So now they're starting to you know integrate some of this. So whether they capture the client interface or they offer their services as part of uh, you know a, a retailer or any other, um, you know, any other organization that's offering their products and services that the financing part of it can be complementary. So, so there's a lot of innovation going on right here and say, how do we partner better with the ecosystem, right? Whether it's a bank partnering with a, a retailer or whether it's uh, you know, a retailer pa uh, partnering with a logistics organization, you know, that you become the logistics provider of choice, right? Uh, and so on. So, so that's where all this API stuff is not just um, about the traditional inter interfacing with one uh, organization or offering your products and services through, through one channel. Now is how do you ensure that you have as many uh, distribution channels as possible, uh, not just your own um, online um, presence, right? So that's where uh, we're starting to see that next phase of API is being used. Right, so loan application embedded as part of the store, cash on delivery from e-commerce players as well. This is one other use case, right, that uh, we look at. Right, so so e-commerce now um, can do cash on delivery service uh, for uh, with the use of APIs. Right, so one other area is um, mobile financial advisory services. I mean. Um, you no longer can do group meetings. You no longer want people to come into your office, especially especially over the last couple of months. You can meet your clients face to face, do all your transactions online, right? And all this is made possible uh, through through APIs. And especially if you have more products and services um, available, um, then the financial advisory service can then partner with you a lot more. But beyond APIs, um, I think I saw some of the topics as well that talked about this. Right, we're starting to see a lot of our of our customers trying to say, "Hey, how do I become more event driven?" And what do you mean by event driven? Right, event driven is about um, it means maybe different things to different people, but the way we look at it and the way where we see organizations are starting to look at is how do they become more responsive to their clients? Right, uh, again, it's all around the customer experience thing. Right, how do you um, you know ensure that you can delight your customers all the time? And one of the key things is be more, I would say, proactive rather than reactive in the way that uh, we do business with our clients, right? So, so one of the key technology drivers uh, with uh, regard to you know a digital platform is the use of events. For example, um, we had a number of organizations say, "Hey." I want to service my clients better, especially my uh, small businesses, right? They cash, they want to manage the cash flow. So if their clients pay them, they want to know that their funds are in so that they can then transfer um, those funds 
to pay their suppliers, mm -hmm. right? So, so instead of checking their bank account twice a day, they want to say, hey, if, if those, uh, those funds have uh, landed in my account, alert me, right? Tell me that my money is in so that then I can use those money to pay my suppliers. So that's one of the, the ways of event driven by offering some of this. And you no, know, that, that has to be integrated with some of the APIs that they have in place to, to be more proactive rather than a pool it'll be, it has become a push, right? Or um, in terms of delivery, for example, if you ordered something from Amazon or from AliExpress or, you know, whichever e-commerce site, you know, sometimes we're always very eager, right? So where, uh, when the product's gonna arrive, right? So some of the use cases you start to see is, um, and then I've started to see some of the use cases, I ordered, you know, I've ordered food, right? And I wanna know what time it's gonna come, right? And a lot of times they say, oh, it's gonna be delivered within the next 45 minutes. And you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting whether, oh, should I go to the toilet, you know, just in case, you know, the, the guy's coming, right? Uh, I have cases where, you know, I've ordered a product, right? And they go, okay, your product is going to be delivered today, right? And, but it's going to be delivered between 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. today. <laughs> and sometimes you're out, you go, okay, uh, am I going to stay at home six hours just to wait for the product to arrive, right? And, and if, if you're not there at that moment, what happens? They reschedule and you, your, your delivery will be rescheduled by another day. That's not going to be good. So what a lot of technology companies, or a lot of e-commerce companies or logistic organizations are saying, hey, I'm going to, how do I compete? You know, how do I offer, how do I make my logistic service or delivery service different from the rest? I want to offer real time. So they say, hey, your product is going to be delivered today from 12 to 6. This is the link of the driver, and this is the driver driving the van that has your product in it, right? And therefore, if you click on this link, you will know real time. And then, by the way, if you want to subscribe, uh, you know, you click this check mark, and it will inform you when the driver is 30 minutes from your home, right? So that at least you know, or an hour from your home, for example, that, okay, you know, if it's an hour from your home, you receive a message, it gets pushed to you, it's event-driven, uh, and then it tells you, then you can say, hey, I'm gonna make sure that someone's home at that time. So you don't have to sit around for six hours waiting for a delivery, right? So these are some of the things that people are using event-driven um, uh, technology to make it, to improve the customer experience. And that's a whole bunch, I'm sure you can probably think of uh, a thousand and one different examples out there. Uh, but um, what I'm saying is that you know, APIs is not just uh, the only technology that you're looking at, right? You now need to differentiate yourself by how do you, by thinking about how do you do push rather than just pull, right? And, and push some of those messages out there and it, to help you to improve your client customer service. So being event-driven is, is, is a different thinking paradigm altogether, right? Um, you're talking about, you know, things happening in real time. How do you make this information available in real time to help decision making, to, to change the way that you do business, right? To, to change the way that um, your businesses do business with other organizations as well, right? So uh, there's a lot of things to think about from a technology standpoint as well, right? So that's the next evolution, I would say, in terms of API. It's not just the pool part of it. Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of push involved, a lot of real time information um that that is being used so when you look at putting in place um some of those uh systems or some of the digital platforms right and and using apis and enabling technology you have to think about you know what's next how do you continue to to uh you know evolve your systems in place and offer more products and services right so again um i'm here on behalf of ibm so I'll talk a little bit about where we see as an organization and what we're doing that's a little bit different that our clients are working with us on, right? Um, so just a little bit, right? So today, actually, um, we did a bit of research and about 84% of digital transformation projects fail, right? Um, and they fail not because, you know, the application's not working or, or the, the products and services are not working. It's because the integration part of it is critical. Right, they don't get the integration right. You don't, you know, a lot of projects fail. Right? And actually, this is from Forbes magazine, right? Uh, there is a link here. I can pass you the link if you like, right? Of why eighty-four percent of companies fail at digital transformation, 
right? And it's all because of siloed data and unreliable integration approaches, right? Um, you know, yes, you may, API may be one of those ways that you do integration, but it's not the only way. And, and it's not the, the one integration technology that's going to help you solve all your integration issue problems, right? Some companies will tell you, yes, it will solve all your, it's the holy grail integration. It will solve all your integration needs. We don't see it that way, right? Uh, and then working with clients, um, a lot of clients um, across different industries, they don't see it that way as well, right? So I have with me, I think some of you, whoever the Formula One car racing uh enthusiasts there are among you but i put this picture out there um I, i'm a kind of a f1 fan in the past now this becomes a bit boring but uh, but um if you look at a car for example a race car right a lot of times people the question that uh people will ask right is um what's the part that makes the most difference right um some of you would say oh it's the driver the driver makes the most difference right and guess what um, you put two drivers, similar drivers, I mean, top drivers, like not me and Lewis Hamilton, there would be a lot of difference, but you put two of the top drivers in the same car, exact same car. The difference between them is probably about half a second to a second a lap at most, right? Half a second usually. Um, then you say, okay, maybe it's not the driver, it's half a second difference. Okay, how, how about if it's a different engine? So you take exactly same car, same driver, swap two engines, top engines again, the difference is probably about half a second to a second a lap, right? In terms of engine. So whether it's a Ferrari engine or a, a, a Mercedes engine, for example. Now you say, okay, let's take the car then, you know, ev everything else be the same, the engine, the drivers, everything. Guess what? What's the difference? It's also about half a second to a second a lap difference, right? So, so then you say, hey, um, there's one part that nobody really thinks of, but if you listen to the race commentary, the part that makes the most difference is actually the tires. It's the cheapest component. Nobody thinks much about it, right? But the tires, uh, back in the, the days, even today, right, they have soft compound, hard compound tires. It's about, um, you'll notice that the difference is about one to two seconds a lap. It's a bigger difference than all the rest of the components. But that's the one that kind of holds everything together. That's the one touching the floor. And that's the foundation, right? A lot of people always forget about the foundation of any application, right? Uh, and that's the integration component, right? The integration component is the one that pulls everything together. It's the least sexy part of it, right? I mean, look at it, APIs. It's one of the ways that integrate, right? It's API, application programming interface. Not very sexy looking. It doesn't, you don't see it at all, but it's doing all the work behind. Right. And, and that's the part that the integration component is critical. Right. And we found that the most successful enterprises um, who are successful with deploying new products and services on the digital front um, has to modernize the integration architecture. And modernizing is not just the use of APIs, but how do you ensure that um, how you integrate all your different applications together? Uh, is, is agile, right? So there we, we talk about agile integration. How do you use um, integration tech, well, the right integration pattern or technology for the right integration uh, type, right? APIs may be very good for interfacing uh, one application to another, but it may not be the best suited for, say, event-driven, right? It may not be the best suited if you want to have rock-solid guaranteed delivery and once and only once delivery. Right. Uh, it may not be best suited for some of the legacy applications that you need to interface with that doesn't have APIs. Right. So, so that that's some of the things that you have to take into consideration. And therefore, um, you know, although you need an API platform to manage all your APIs, you still need application integration. You still need ability to do, uh, you know, once and only once transactions, especially when it comes to payments and so on. Right, um, and therefore, how do you put all of these integration technologies together? Because not one is going to be the only technology integration pattern or technology they're going to use, right? So that's where we start to see the birth of what we call hybrid integration platforms, where you know you need a variety of different technologies to help you, uh, you know, integrate successfully um, all your digital platforms together, 
right? And that's where um, you, we see that you are able, with that, you're able to become more agile. Once you have an integration platform in place, that helps you to you know, become more agile and be able to deploy, to become more successful, successful in the way that you deploy your, your digital applications, right? And, and thereby reducing your costs and improving your time to market. And with that, within IBM itself, we've, we've seen that and we've created uh, a single platform, uh, which is, we call the Cloud Piper integration. And we look at, say, we can manage APIs, we can provide you uh, application integration, we can do uh, enterprise, rock solid enterprise in messaging that does guaranteed messaging. We can cope with event-driven applications, as well as if you need to transfer files, massive, uh, massive files, uh, or large volumes of files um, across long distances. Uh, we can do that securely as well. And then around all of that, especially when you have APIs, um, you know, security is key. How do you protect and ensure that, um, you know, that security uh, component is taken care of? And all of this technology has to run, you know, on a variety of different clouds, whether it's AWS, Azure, Google, you know, or on a private on-prem environment. Right, so or uh, in a variety of different clouds at the same time. So you don't want to be locked in into one cloud provider. So that's where we say, hey, you need that because any organization that's building digital presence platforms will require um, that kind of technology in place or, or all these different ways of doing integration because not one single integration pattern is going to solve all your integration problems. Right? So that's one one key thing to take uh, to to take take note of, right? The other thing I talk about tires again, let's come back to the topic of tires. I think all of you have seen this ad, right? Once you launch digital platforms, right? Um, and you put yourself out there, um, the expectation is very different, right? Uh, if you open a physical store, you close, it's okay, it happens. Uh, but once you're online, you know, you're, you're expected to be on 24 seven, right? And therefore um, you need to be able to manage the environment well. And failure is, well, it's inevitable, but it's also not well looked at, right? You cannot fail. Once you're out there, the um, main thing is how do you restore your services or ensure that your services are up as often as possible, right? So, I mean, you look at the largest organizations, whether it's Microsoft or Netflix, they have all gone down for a variety of different reasons, right? And, and I mean, just recently, I think, you know, um, sometimes, not, not that recent, but sometime back as well. Um, like for example, one, one of, um, a lot of organizations put all their workloads on a particular public cloud provider, on one single cloud provider. And they realized that then there was one huge game that launched, that was in Korea, right? That, that launched and they were using that same cloud provider. The, the response was so overwhelming that it brought the entire cloud provider down, right? And then people realized, oh, I cannot just rely on one public cloud provider, right? I have to rely on two right, or three, a variety. So they need to have a multi-hybrid cloud uh, environment, right? And that's where you start to see, hey, if I have that, there's more complexity, how do I ensure that it's up all the time? And that's where you see the applications of AI, you start to look at AI operations, the, the infusion of AI, right? So, you know, when you think about your APIs that are out there, that are doing business, that becomes your core backbone of doing business, how then you have to look at how do you ensure that those APIs are up and running all the time. That's where AI comes in, where you say, hey, how do I use AI to, to help me to, you know, improve the availability of my operations, right? And that's where AI ops, the world of AI ops comes in, where you want to kind of reduce um, the, the time that you have to detect failures or even predict what's going to happen, minimize failures, and then if failures do happen, or downtime does happen, reduce the mean time to resolution tremendously. Because we realized and we conducted a research that an hour of downtime can cost an average enterprise about 420,000 US dollars in terms of lost business and reputation and all that stuff, right? So reducing that is key. So it's not just good enough putting your APIs out there, but you need to think about how to ensure that your APIs are up there running 24 seven, right? And that's where, um, you know, the, the use of AI to run IT operations is critical where we can, you know, they can help you to, you know, augment the people that you need 24 seven because you can't run, you can't have, you know, so many shifts of people and experts running all the time, 
right? So the use of AI is important to ensure that your um, you know, digital presence, the, the, the reputation and the service is up and available all the time, right? And so I know my time is almost out, but um, just a couple of key takeaways, right? So one key thing that ne we never lose sight of, of is that when you launch your API presence and expand on it and you evolve your services, always ex do not forget the why and always pick good use cases for implementation that involve the key stakeholders. And ultimately, the most important thing as well is never forget the foundation. I mean, building any building um, is no different, right? I mean, you always, you know, deep, deep foundations, right? So same thing here, when you build out your digital presence and your API platforms and the way you collaborate, your foundation must be rock solid. You must be able to provide a technology that's able to scale, uh, able to offer you the different ways that you need to integrate to different applications within your environment or with your clients as well. Or your ecosystem, but at the same time, also ensure from, um, you know, that you have the necessary tools uh, and technology in place to ensure that your service is up and running all the time. Because once you have it out there, the expectation is it has to be there all the time, right? So that's that's critical, and that's some thought uh, as you move on in your API journey. So with that, um, I thank you for your time today. There are any questions? <clears throat> right, so with that, um, thanks, John. Yeah, um, someone's mentioning you didn't know Razor. Yeah, Razor just sent me an email, asked me to be part of their beta program for a credit card. Looks really, really cool. It's um, black with the green logo, and you know they have one version where you tap, the light will go on. So, so I signed up for it, but uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, they're going to that business now. <clears throat> right. So, any questions? If not, uh, yeah, I, I wish everyone a good uh, week ahead and a good day as well.